This is a follow-up to my previous video where I discuss how bullet ballistics for aircraft-mounted guns work in-game. In that video, I mostly discussed the methods I used to theoretically determine bullet deceleration, and then validated it with in-game testing. For this video, I wanted to expand on the list of guns I compared to include ones found on jets and do a more general discussion and comparison. Before I can get to that though, there's one thing that I need to correct from the previous video. So in the last video, I said that the mouse cursor and third person gun sight fell on the line made by the pilot and the in cockpit gun sight. However, a commenter brought to my attention that on some planes, the gun never actually intersects with the cockpit gun sight when the conversions and vertical targeting are set to 50 meters. So the fact that the bullets go through the third person crosshair but not the in cockpit gun sight disproves the way that my theory previously worked. So I spent about 3 hours with a friend testing a bunch of planes and their crosshairs to try and figure out how the cursor works, and so I'll save you the pain of the whole process and just tell you what we found. Every plane in War Thunder has its own local coordinate and axes, where the X, Y, and Z axes point forwards, leftwards, and upwards. Somewhere inside the plane, Gaijin has defined a center for the plane where the, its coordinates are 0, 0, 0, and this is usually its center of mass for the plane. The x-axis typically points in the direction of thrust, though this is not always the case, and we think that it is on this x-axis that the third person crosshair falls on. You can find the center of mass and the x-axis of all planes in game using the acid viewer, where 0, 0, 0 is the origin that you can find using the position gizmo, and the grid shows the xy plane. You can see this effect very clearly on planes with pilots that are very offset from the center, like the F-82 where with a short convergence, the crosshair is much farther to the right. We're using the virtual cockpit here, which has a camera located in the same place as the regular cockpit view. Just without the aircraft visual model, a narrower FOV, and a few more indicators of aircraft state. Also, this gray indicator seems to fall along the same X line for the aircraft at 1000 meters along the line, since it coincides exactly with the crosshair when convergence is set to none. We can also see that it's not located an infinite distance away because if it were, it would be pointed directly in front of the camera in the virtual cockpit mode, but it is still slightly offset to the right when you compare it with the velocity vector while flying straight, the direction that should be pointing directly forward. Another plane on which this effect is apparent is the Sunderland, the only plane I could find that has a center of mass above the pilot and also a set of fixed forward mounted guns, meaning that it has the unique trait of having a third person crosshair that goes up instead of down when shortening the convergence. And the gray indicator follows below the crosshair instead of above as it does on most planes. And one final example of funk that occurs because of this is that when choosing a plane with very high mounted guns like the D371, setting a close vertical targeting will actually angle the guns downward because the guns lie above the center of mass. So what was the point of this? I don't know, we found something wrong with our original theory and so took a closer look that led us down this rabbit hole to correct ourselves. I don't actually know how useful this is, but perhaps this might be good to know for sim players who rely a lot more on the in cockpit gun sight since they don't have the access to the third person crosshair. Anyways, on to the gun comparisons. To restate how I tested in the previous video, I'll be taking what I think is the most effective round on most of the guns you see on fighter aircraft and graphing distance traveled for a horizontally fired bullet over time using the drag calculations I explained in that previous video. I won't be accounting for gravity or the first bullet in belt velocity bug because that would take too long to run a test on for each individual round. Also, this will be a purely ballistics comparison without considering damage output, fire rate, dispersion, or the airframe it's mounted on. So for prop tier at ranks 3 and 4, these are the graphs again from the previous video, but I've changed the formatting and added some guns. I added 500 km per hour to all the initial velocities to simulate them being fired from an airframe traveling at that speed. Surprisingly, the best gun for within 800 meters is the 15mm MG151 found on the 109F2 and the DO335As. You can take them as gun pods on the 109F4, but their accuracy is much worse. The Sermet Kermit? Sermit? Core rounds have a comically high muzzle velocity of 1030 meters per second. The damage from it can be a bit lackluster if you don't spark a fire, but you can still switch the belts with high explosive frag rounds instead, which still have a pretty high muzzle velocity of 960 meters per second. 
The AK-9T's 37mm is the best sniping gun beyond 800m with a muzzle velocity of 880m per second, but more importantly a very low amount of drag for its mass, and so it keeps its speed much better. Also one thing to note is that the British 50 cal is worse than the American counterpart thanks to it having a much slower API round, so use the belt that has the tracer round at the start if possible. I was also surprised by how below average a lot of the high caliber rounds for Japanese planes were, with the Type 5 30mm on the J5N1, J7W, Kika, and the R2Y2 being comparable to the 50 cals and the rest being much slower. I also had to include the funny 40mm that goes subsonic. China doesn't get any of its own planes, Italy gets a lot of German guns, and France does not really have any domestic planes with noteworthy guns. Sweden, on the other hand, has a lot of domestic guns that are all very strong on average. Now on to rank 5 and 6 jets. For these guns, I've added 700 km per hour to reflect the higher speed combat at these ranks. Early US and German jets maintain a lot of their World War II guns, most of which are pretty good, with the exception of the MK-108 and the MG-151, though they do start becoming below average fairly quickly. Then the US gets a lot of different types of 20mm, which have very similar ballistics to each other, like the Vulcan or the Browning Colts, which are nice upgrades over the 50 cal. Germany's unique gun for this BR is the Mauser on the Alphajet, which wins across the board compared to all of its competition. It's very fast, and it loses very little speed. Russia gets a lot of low velocity guns that are worse than a lot of the Russian guns from prop tier, which kinda sucks until you get to the 30mm on the MiG-19 and Su-25, which have very low drag coefficients and so hold their speed very well. The British don't get anything new until the Aidens, which have worse ballistics than the Hispanos, so that kinda sucks. Japan doesn't get anything new until the Vulcans, which is better, but you can see at range the Vulcan can get pretty draggy, so loses to the Type 5 30mm on the Kika above 1km. The Chinese get a good 30mm and a below average 23mm. The Italians get one of my favorite guns in the game, the Hispano HS825, which you can see just wins by a long shot. It's found on the Sagittario and the Ariete, as well as the P16. France gets like 5 different variants of the Defa, which all have basically the same ballistics. I thought they were clones of the Aiden, but turns out they have slightly more muzzle velocity, but they're still pretty below average like the Aidens. The Swedes get a few new guns that don't really improve upon the ballistics from previously, but are still just as punchy, so work pretty well. And now for the top 2 ranks, I added 900 kph to the speeds for each vehicle. The Gao 8 on the A10 is the clear winner here, it has the lowest drag coefficient of the game that I could find on any aircraft. And while it may be a bit unfair to compare them like this since the gun is mainly found on the A10 which has a hard time breaking 700 kph, you still find a Gunpod version of it on the F5E and the A7s. The Vulcan is a very mediocre gun now, it has a high muzzle velocity but a lot of drag. In fact, the 15mm MG151 on the BF109 F2 experiences less drag deceleration at all speeds when compared to the Vulcan, though it's not like you get much of a choice when you're playing America at high tier. The Russians get a lot of guns with below average muzzle velocity but lower drag, making them better than their competition for long range shots. Uh, the Gush 23 is still pretty bad though. The British are still stuck with the Aidens for the most part, though the Aiden 25 is actually really good, though I guess it better have to be since they only get stealth belts. And China gets more slightly improved Russian clones, though their Type 23 is slightly better than the Russian Gush 23 by having a muzzle velocity that's 5 meters per second higher. Definitely the kind of gun that I would want to bring to top tier, though I guess it doesn't really matter too much because most of that BR is missile BR anyways. The French are still stuck with the Defas. The Swedes get an upgrade in the form of the Khan M75 on the Vigans, though they're stealth only and can be pretty wonky to aim. The Mauser on the Gripen is a bit worse in ballistics, but it's still very good. Well, that's everything I felt like including. Hopefully I didn't miss anything or didn't make any typos while running the script. I haven't validated any of these with experimental tests beyond what I did from the last video, so there's a chance some of these might be wrong. Still, I think I have a better grasp of how different guns compare and why the Vulcan feels so subpar at long ranges, and I feel like a lot of the results here are reflected in game without anything seeming wildly off, so hopefully they're fine for the most part. Anyways, I left the baby in the freezer so I'm gonna go make sure he's doing okay in there. I'll see you guys later.